What's happening guys? Sam Adams here and welcome to a brand new episode of Caffeinate today for June the 4th of 2019. My name is Samuel Adams and welcome to today's show. Of course, as always, I do hope this episode finds you well and if you happen to be brand new to the show, this is a daily gaming news podcast hosted five days a week, Monday through Friday around 7 a.m. Eastern time on twitch.tv slash Samuel Adams to keep you up to date and informed on what is happening in the gaming industry. Of course, on top of that, the show is then taken down and put up on youtube.com slash Samuel Adams Media as well as podcast services around the world so you can find it wherever you like to consume content. With that being said, what news are we going to be talking about today? Well, as it tends to go, it is the week before E3 and all through the house, all the pipes, all the bathtubs and the sinks are leaking about. The stock, I could keep going, but you understand what I'm saying. There are a lot of leaks coming out. Watch Dogs Legion has officially been leaked and confirmed by Kotaku to be a real thing. On top of that, we have a Splinter Cell leak, although not the direct game. It is, in fact, one of those small accessory collectibles that you have sitting on your shelf collecting dust. It's one of those. So we'll talk more about what that could mean for the future of Splinter Cell. Thursday is going to be a big day because Google is announcing Stadia's pricing and launch details. The Surge 2's release date has also gotten leaked ahead of E3. Shinmu 3's release date has not gotten leaked but instead pushed back. We'll talk more about that. Xbox and PlayStation gamepad support extends across iOS 13. There is a Magic the Gathering Netflix show and if you are in the market for an Xbox One or some games or some PC peripherals, there's a pretty good sale coming up for you. And that is pretty much the lineup for today's show. Again, if you are brand new, welcome in. I do hope you enjoy what I bring to the table. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into today's top stories. First off, Watchdog Legion leaks, and it will let you play as any NPC. It wouldn't be E3 without every Ubisoft game leaking, now wouldn't it? Following Roller Champions last month, the third Watch Dogs has now leaked out thanks to Amazon UK and it's called Watch Dogs Legion. Kotaku can confirm that this one is real and we've heard the name for several sources plugged into the company. Watch Dogs Legion is set in London, as we confirmed a while ago, they say at Kotaku. And here is the really interesting gimmick. You can play as any NPC you recruit in the game. From the product description it reads, Play as anyone. Every individual you meet in the open world has a full set of animations, voiceover, character traits, and visuals that are generated and guided by gameplay systems. I've heard the name, Jason Schreier says, and also that you'll see different things at different points in the game depending on which NPC you are playing as. In in fact, from what he has heard, the system is so ambitious it's been causing the developers a lot of headaches and may have led to at least one delay, and of course we will see more at E3 next week. But this sounds really cool. Of course, every Watchdog game has had some kind of gimmick that really does bring people back into it. Uh, and also, the setting is very vibrant nine times out of ten. Now, how will they approach that uh, with London? I suppose we will see next week. But Nonetheless, very interesting franchise, and one that I think has lasted longer than I had originally anticipated that it would. Uh, the original Watch Dogs didn't really land that well with fans. Watch Dogs 2 definitely saw a big resurgence. A lot more people enjoyed that one. There was a general positive reception. And Watch Dogs 3 slash Watch Dogs Legion is set up to be a pretty big hit if the cards are played correctly. Now, with that being said, the gimmick, the big draw of the game, uh, the cherry on top, you can play as any NPC, that sounds very ambitious, and I'm curious as to how that is going to go. Uh, overall, I'm very excited to see what the future of Watch Dogs looks like, because it's a cool concept. The world uh, that is completely and totally connected by technology and the implications of that, what happens through that, that sounds really interesting. Now, Decky in the chat says, Watch Dogs Legion, but spelled with a 3 in Legion instead of an E. That's marketing potential. That right there, that's a poster waiting to happen. These are good ideas. But nonetheless, Ubisoft's press conference is just a couple of days away, so we will be sure to update you as to what happens with Watch Dogs Legion. But right now, it sounds pretty cool if I did have to say so myself. Of course, many, many games 
are prepped to be announced at E3, one of which is apparently a brand new Splinter Cell. A new GameStop leak points to Splinter Cell E3 reveal. A new leak out of GameStop seems to suggest that Ubisoft will reveal a new Splinter Cell during E3 2019. Spotted by Wario64, yesterday GameStop had Splinter Cell Sam Fisher goggles up for pre-order as part of its E3 collectibles. And then, adding fuel to the fire today, it suddenly delisted the item almost as if it spilled the beans and was contacted by Ubisoft seems very plausible in my opinion. Interestingly, the listing says the item will be made available on November the 1st of this year, which is a Friday, the most common day for big games to release alongside Tuesday. In other words, the date checks out and the date seems to suggest that that's when a new Splinter Cell will in fact hit. Now, it is worth pointing out that the image that accompanies the listing is from Splinter Cell Blacklist, which is to say it is not new. It is possibly a merely, uh, you know, a placeholder of sorts, but it's odd GameStop has that image for the product. It's also worth pointing out that sometimes people make mistakes, including people who work for GameStop. Maybe the listing was an accident or wasn't supposed to be listed as an E3 collectible. Okay, we'll go with that one. As of all... Excuse me, all of this is to say, take this with a grain of salt. There have been rumblings, reports, rumors, leaks, and even some possible teases that a new Splinter Cell is in the works, but at the moment, Ubisoft has not confirmed anything. And in fact, the latest rumor involving the game actually claims that after multiple canned projects, Ubisoft is currently not making a new entry in the Stealth series. But what's the truth? What is the actual legitimate what's going to be happening with Splinter Cell? I think we could be seeing a big reveal here. Now, the question is whether or not we are going to be seeing uh, the game revealed and released at November, or at that November kind of time frame. I think that one's still kind of up in the air. Because again, is it a game that would release on a Friday? It's certainly big enough too, but it seems like more of a Tuesday release. The Friday releases tend to be your big Call of Duties, your Battlefields, so to speak. That kind of big release. Splinter Cell, is it on that same kind of level? It very well could be. At the end of the day, they can release the game whenever they want. If they want to do it on a Wednesday, a Monday, a Sunday, games just come out and you can do it pretty much at any point. But November is, of course, a very popular month to release games. It seems fitting to release a Splinter Cell around that time. And, of course, I don't know why GameStop would put up a pre-order page for Collectible Goggles Replica uh, if there wasn't going to be some kind of Collectible Goggles Replica released alongside a brand new game. That just makes sense to me. In addition to that, we also saw, I believe, Splinter Cell added to the Xbox backwards compatibility program uh, either a couple of years back or a couple of weeks back. One of the two. It's out on the Xbox One. So, of course, that does hint that maybe they want people to be playing the game. Maybe if you wanted to go back and see what happened in Blacklist, etc., that's the kind of option you would have. And so it could be setting up a big reveal for this year's E3, and I think it would be a fitting reveal because of the amount of teases and the amount of anticipation that this franchise has been getting over the course of the past few years. It truly has been impressive to see, hey, people want a new Splinter Cell game. And to be fair, they are good games. But if you are curious as to whether or not you would be getting one this E3, it seems like it's incredibly possible. Because again, why would you put up a pre-order page if there are no collectible goggles to come with a collectible edition of the game? To come with a regular edition of the game and then you want some goggles? I'm just saying, these goggles, man, they're out there proving things. They are. Anyways, moving on to the next topic of the day. You could be playing Splinter Cell Blacklist on Google Stadia, maybe even the next Splinter Cell game on Google Stadia. But now we'll know how much it costs and when you will be able to do that. E3 is starting a bit early with some announcements and a reveal of Google Stadia Cloud Gaming Service, which of course was announced at GDC and raised a lot of questions, and it looks like many of them will be answered very soon. Today, Google announced a Stadia-focused event where it will share a number of details about the game's launch. That includes, or excuse me, the service's launch, I should say. That includes the big three concerns, pricing, games, and launch details, which hopefully means an actual date. The reveal comes just ahead of a big week for games, with E3 in LA kicking off on Saturday. Some news can't wait for E3, Google says. The event will be live-streamed on June the 6th at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, and you can check it out at the link which has been provided via The Verge. 
Stadia, meanwhile, is expected to launch later this year. And of course, for those that don't know, Stadia is basically uh, cloud streaming of a variety of video games. The most notable one that has been proven to actually function well is Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but a lot of questions are still up in the air about Stadia, specifically pricing and launch date, and also what kind of connection is going to be needed, what kind of buffering is going to happen with this game, the performance of Stadia overall. All of these questions have yet to be answered, but they are all questions that are going to be answered very, very soon. So when could we be seeing a launch? I would say early fall, maybe mid-fall, uh, would be a pretty good point for Stadia to come out. Imagine if this service launched alongside all of these big, huge, enormous releases we're going to be seeing towards the end of the year. That would change the game. That would definitely put Google Stadia on the map if it is completely and totally functional. And again, that's still up in the air as well. A lot can go wrong on the back end. Of course, for those that don't necessarily log into things via the Google Cloud, uh, the Google Cloud crashed, I believe, two days ago. And so, for those that don't know what that means, there are various companies that use Google for their data processing services. So, for instance, Google's Cloud went down, Snapchat went down, YouTube went down, Gmail went down. You see where I'm going with this. If Google stuff tanks on the back end, it would be pretty shitty to have been paying for Google Stadia and not be able to play your games because the Google Data Cloud is down. That's the issue that presents itself as we inch further and further into the future where we might not necessarily need a console or we might not even necessarily need a PC. Whenever the technology on the back end, whenever the servers on the back end begin to fail, there's nothing we can do on our end and so we're kind of just sitting there without any kind of service that we are paying for again paying for that but hopefully all of the kinks have been worked out of course all of these topics are on the minds of the developers behind the scenes I have no doubts but it still leaves a lot of people questioning whether or not this could actually be something that takes off and is a viable way to consume content but again, we will see what happens at this year's E3. And of course, on June the 6th, we will have a big coverage event of Google Stadia, which of course, the day after, you know your boy's going to be here breaking down the hottest gaming news coming out of the uh, little show. So don't you worry, it's going to be a pretty good time. But moving on, we have yet another release date getting leaked, which probably admittedly should have been earlier in the show alongside the other big announcements but the surge 2's release date gets leaked by microsoft's australian store it is shocking some may say crikey because australia uh, it looks like focus home interactives the surge 2 will be coming out in september at least according to a recent microsoft store australia leak spotted by wccf tech and still available the follow-up to the decent enough original will be hitting pc ps4 and xbox one on september 23rd 2019 pre-orders at least from microsoft store will include a bunch of extra items for players to use the urban gear pack will contain the cutter weapon from the original surge an urban armor set and the judgment axe the skimmer drone and luke scan.exe radar module and a unique online message icon none of that means anything to me but if it does to you you could pre-order and get all of it the local price in australia is listed at 89.95 which translates to roughly 60 dollars in the u.s so this doesn't seem to be a limited or digital deluxe edition offer i'm not sure the author says of any of this stuff and its essentialness but it does seem decent enough for fans with e3 happening next week this was likely the result of someone checking a live box too early and we are bound to hear more about the surge 2 during all of the hubbub and possibly even at microsoft's e3 conference which seems very fitting in my opinion while i wouldn't take this release date with a confirmation it is likely 99 percent accurate and again september 23rd 2019 looking at the surge 2. so for those that never played the surge it's okay it plays like dark souls mixed in with some cyberpunk futuristic kind of setting it wasn't the best game i believe it was given away for free via either xbox live gold or playstation plus at some point along the line potentially even both uh, but when it comes down to it it's a fine game it's a middle of the road game uh, it's not one that's blowing my mind but it's cool to see it getting a sequel because the setting was very neat and overall the gameplay didn't disappoint but it didn't blow me away either uh, so if you do want to pick up the surge too again apparently coming out september the 23rd with more info coming out next week at e3 more than likely at the microsoft conference because that's incredibly fitting for microsoft to announce this specific style of game but i suppose we'll have to wait and see just a couple of days again the xbox conference i believe this sunday uh, which is coming up very quickly and we will definitely be seeing a lot of games a lot of consoles a lot of announcements and we'll talk about all of that more later on in today's show 
But Shenmue 3's release date has been delayed. Not leaked, like the other games we've talked about, but delayed. Forklift physics take time. The partially crowdfunded sequel, a uh, sequel, it's a Sean Connery sequel to Shinmu. Uh, the partially crowdfunded sequel Shinmu 3 needs more time and development and has been delayed. The game had been slated for a release on August 27th, but has now been pushed back for a fall release of November the 19th. In a letter on the game's Kickstarter page, creator Yu Suzuki explained the delay. Whilst almost ready, that's right, whilst almost ready. The game simply needs a little more refinement before being truly finished, it states. We feel that the extra time we have will help us deliver the true Shinmu experience players around the world deserve. We thank you for your patience and your understanding. Shinmu 3 debuted at E3 2015, neatly siguing, siguing? It's a strange word to use, into a Kickstarter campaign that reached an all-time record-breaking 6.3 million from 70,000 backers. Let's back up for a minute. Let's talk about the announcement of Shinmu 3. That was the weirdest conference I've ever seen and the weirdest announcement for a game to date. So what happened is basically on the PlayStation stage, in the middle of the conference, this dude comes up and pimps his Kickstarter. All of a sudden, just boom, if you want... So they showed the trailer and they were like, if you want that to happen, you have to give us money. It was like, it was like being blackmailed. It was, it was effective. And now you have $6.3 million from 70,000 backers. But it kept the crowdfunding going with a slacker backer campaign, which added roughly another million. And in 2017, Deep Silver announced it would publish the game. At that point, it was scheduled for the second half of 2018. The sequel to Shinmu has been a long time coming. Shinmu 2 was released in 2001, and being aware of the development through the crowdfunding campaign has made the length of this sequel's development stand out. It has gone through multiple delays, and Suzuki has left fans in on the process and promised changes based on feedback. Uh, so, of course, I'm covering this because Shinmu 3 is a big, big deal, and Shinmu is a game that people absolutely love. For me... Couldn't care less. It's coming, and it's cool to see it be, uh, you know, passionately loved by a community of thousands of people that want to back this and want to make this a reality. But at the end of the day, I'm never going to play this. That's just me, though. Uh, but you could play this in November of 2019 if you do want to pick up Shinmu 3, of course, as it does round out some time in development hell, of which it has spent plentiful amounts of time. But nonetheless, glad it's coming out in 2019, better than being pushed back to 2020, especially after being announced in 2015. I will say, though, depending on the game, a delay is kind of not a big deal. Now, of course, the goal is to get a quality product out at the expected date. That's always going to be the goal for any kind of developer, publisher, etc. But with Shinmu... What are these people going to do? Go play something else? There's nothing like Shinmu out there. It's a very specific uh, niche game. And so to be able to take your time on it to make it uh, the best possible experience is the only option here because you can't just pump one out and say, well, we'll just do another one next year like you could with Call of Duty. No, that's not how this works. So good move overall, in my opinion. However, if you just absolutely love mobile gaming, but you also love the Xbox gamepad or the PlayStation 4 DualShock, you are in luck because it extends support across the iOS and, of course, that includes iPads and iPhones. It should be easy to hop on the sticks when Apple Arcade launches. During Apple's WWC 2019 keynote, the company showed off so many things, even our own cut-down version of the event lasts nearly half an hour. One of the reveals was that tvOS 13 will be compatible with PlayStation 4 and Bluetooth-equipped Xbox One controllers, conveniently for both Apple's own arcade gaming plants and any others with cloud aspirations. But in case it's unclear, it also extends to iPad and iPhone. So to to make it very clear, you will be able to use a DualShock 4 or an Xbox One gamepad with iOS on both iPad and iPhone as well as on your Apple TV. Once iOS 13 rolls out, you will be able to use these controllers easily with your device, no workarounds needed. With Apple reportedly spending hundreds of millions to get games to be part of its subscription package, it is good to know that controllers we already generally like and probably have laying around will be able to keep doing their job. And so, of course, we get tweets from PlayStation, we get tweets from Major Nelson Larry Herb over there on Twitter, and of course... This is pretty cool news. Mobile gaming is bigger than it ever has been before, and to be able to have genuine native support across multiple devices is the best way to go about making sure that Apple Arcade and any kind of cloud gaming that is going on on Apple devices in the future is adopted well. 
I mean, imagine playing, uh, hypothetically, Fortnite with a PlayStation 4 controller on your iPad. That is a 12-year-old's wet dream. Make no mistake about it. That was a gross image, wasn't it? Now it's in your brain. Uh, but exciting times, nonetheless, to see that all these companies are beginning to collaborate, to work together, to really uh, make a better future for gaming itself instead of competing directly with each other. Because I personally, in my opinion, uh, would have expected Apple to create some kind of knockoff controller that wasn't quite as comfortable as the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One controller and just try and pimp that and charge between $90 and $100 for it. Because Apple always adds $30 to the actual amount that you need to purchase a piece of technology but I digress it's going to be coming very soon of course iOS 13 coming out pretty soon as well but Apple Arcade going to be a big part of mobile gaming going into the future of 2019 and beyond but if you do want to catch up on the hottest news from WWDC, including brand new Macs, uh, the dedicated iOS uh, developed specifically for iPad, then you can check out all of the biggest news from Engadget and, of course, many other sources. But Engadget did some pretty great coverage of this year's show. However, if you want to watch something that's not a conference and you want to watch an actual show, you could be watching the Magic the Gathering Netflix series because it is in the works and it's from the Avengers Endgame directors. That's right. Who would have thought that last part would have been actually a reality? Well, this is a pretty interesting development to a randomly happening on Monday. Confirmed to Destructoid, Netflix has announced in conjunction with Hasbro, which owns Wizards of the Coast and their AllSpark Animation Studio, that they are teaming up with Joe and Anthony Russo of Arrested Development and Marvel fame to create an animated Magic the Gathering series for the first time in the franchise's 25-year history. It will feature an all-new storyline that will focus on the Planeswalkers, powerful beings in the Magic universe that can traverse worlds and serve as some of the most impactful cards in the game. Yoriaki Machizuki nailed it, who worked on the Lego films and Into the Spider-Verse as directing and script duties will be handled by Henry Gilroy, famous for Star Wars The Clone Wars, and Jose Molina, The Tick and Agent Carter. The Russos will be executive producers, and allegedly the series will span the genres of thriller, horror, and drama. So far, the only confirmed character, by the way, of the promotional teaser screen is Chandra Nalar, the fire-based planeswalker that serves as one of the most iconic characters in the franchise. Magic just wrapped up a years-long storyline in their card game arc, which now extends to Magic Arena, a near one-to-one -one replication of the tabletop experience on PC. All this time, Wizards of the Coast has dabbled in various mixed-media projects like novels and video games games, but obviously this TV series with major parties and creatives involved is a big deal. With so much raw animation talent, it has a lot of promise and it looks like everyone involved wants to do it right. This is a fantastic idea. Uh, the good thing about card games and the good thing about Magic the Gathering is that within the entire world and, and the, the lore, I suppose, is the best way to put it, there are so many options for storytelling. There are so many stories to be told. Uh, there's just so much depth to the world that it seems like a no-brainer that this would make a phenomenal TV show depending on how it's executed. Now, of course, we've seen a lot of success with animation uh, projects on Netflix so far, and to have so many big names on board is obviously already getting a lot of eyeballs on this project, more than you would have without some of these big names, admittedly. But with that being said, exciting times for those that like Magic the Gathering, because the game has made a huge resurgence and has just grown in popularity uh, a ton over the course of the past couple of years, and it's now getting its own Netflix show. But from the Avengers Endgame directors, which of course are very talented individuals, we will see how this project does turn out. I would say you wouldn't be getting this any earlier than maybe spring of 2020, uh, fall of 2020 at the latest. But we will definitely continue covering that story. So now to wrap up the day with some good deals. As I always tend to provide you guys, free games, whatever they might be, a couple of bucks off a controller, Today, we've got a huge Xbox sale that's going on during E3, as they tend to host. Now, I want to make something very clear before I dive into this. Actually, pause. Let's read through the deals first, so you can deliberate, get excited, and then I can let you down. Just like Dad. Microsoft is gearing up for E3 with huge discounts on its consoles, controllers, and games, including $100 off an Xbox One X. Beginning June 7th and ending June 17th, the following deals hit online and physical stores. $100 off an Xbox One X. 
$50 off a new Xbox One S Fortnite Battle Royale Special Edition bundle, the purple one we talked about last week. $50 off Xbox One S bundles and the new Xbox One S Sad Edition, the S All Digital. For those that don't know, not a depressed console. Up to 75% off select games and $10 off controllers. The Xbox One X discount is a great deal considering the strongest console on the market still retails for up to $499. If your launch Xbox is on its last legs, the Xbox One S All Digital Edition is a great upgrade, boasting a 1TB hard drive and a wireless controller for only $199 during the sale. Deals on consoles and games will vary by retailer, but Microsoft says Xbox One X enhanced titles will be discounted, including Sea of Thieves, FIFA 18, Assassin's Creed Origins, and Forza Motorsport 7. And of course, there are other games on the sale, which include Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, Forza Horizon 4, World War Z, The Division 2, NBA 2K19, Anthem, and Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Spectre Rising Edition. PC gamers can rejoice and get some good deals on the sale as well. Certain free sync displays plays will be available at up to $500 off as well as some PCs and laptops and of course there are more details on the Xbox Wire which is the official Xbox blog. E3 is next week so be sure to stay tuned for what games you'll be spending more money on next year. But now it's time for me to break it down for you the way that they really want you to spend money. Uh, there's a brand new Xbox that is going to be announced at this year's E3 conference. If you go out now and you buy a console there is no reason you should do that. I, I don't know how to make it any more clear than that. If you want to get a console, just wait until 2019, fall 2019, which is when I think the Xbox One or Xbox Two, whatever you want, the next Xbox is going to launch. There is no reason to spend 300 to $500 on any kind of console this late in the console cycle. It just doesn't make sense. Now, with that being said, if you are somebody who just casually plays games and you have no console at the moment if I had to pick a console for you it would be the Xbox One S all digital edition or any of the other editions because again at $199 it's a very affordable way to get into every big game on the market and of course a lot of sales going on as well but to spend an Xbox One X or spend the amount of money you need for an Xbox One X this late in the console cycle doesn't make sense that's silly that's kind of a waste of money when you've got a brand new console coming out that's probably going to be roughly about the same price as the Xbox One X at its full price you just don't need it. Uh, so we will see what happens with the Xbox sale. But as it stands, a lot of good deals to be had, a lot of good games uh, to be checked out. And of course, 10 bucks off controllers, $50 off bundles, $100 off the Xbox One. A lot of discounts here if you are in the market for any of that stuff. But again, think about stuff before you buy it. You don't necessarily need to be picking up an Xbox One this late in the game. But with that being said, that rounds out today's episode of Caffeinate. Of course, if you are brand new to the show, I do hope you enjoyed today's episode. And you can always check it out on YouTube.com slash Samuel Adams Media and podcast services around the world. If you did want to check out the other versions of the show, go back to revisit it, watch it again, whatever you might want to do. And just click that follow, click that subscribe, do all of that good stuff to make sure it gets to you every single day, five days a week, Monday through Friday, around 7 a.m. Eastern Time. But with that being said, you guys have a phenomenal rest of your day. I will talk to you tomorrow morning, and peace.